So you want to install some RGB products. However, you've come across ARGB, digital RGB, RGB that, RGB this. You don't exactly know how it all works. G'day legends, Jono here from Thermal Tech Australia. And today I'm going to try and decipher that for you. So next time it comes to building up your rig, it's a little easier. So I'm going to explain to you how to connect and install our ARGB edition line of products like our ARGB fans and TH water coolers. And then I'm going to show you our plus lineup, which is our digital proprietary controller edition of RGB products. They both have pros and cons and it kind of is up to you to decide which one you want to go with. But like I said, I'm going to try and make it a little bit easier because I totally get how muddy the details can be. So, let's get started. To make things a little easier, I am going to have a motherboard here. And so the B cam, which Sarah is graciously holding over there, she's going to show you the small details that I connect into on the motherboard. Because there are differences between the two, I'm going to kick off with our plus lineup, the digital controlled RGB. So I'm going to use our Ring Trio fans here as an example. When you get a packet of these fans, you can see that they come with one cable from them. This powers them, but also controls the RGBs inside the fan itself. So I'm gonna unwrap that. So here you go. This isn't your typical four or three pin fan header that you get on normal fans or ARGB fans for that matter. It's proprietary to our controller. So there is only one spot you can put this. It will not fit on your motherboard. It can only fit into the included controller. Now the controllers look slightly different depending on the model of fans because some fans with more uh, RGBs inside of them, or RGBs, some fans with more LEDs inside of them require a little bit higher output. So we have different controllers for that. You have five ports on the controller which you can control RGB products with because it's not just limited to fans. We have water blocks from water-cooled uh, systems. We have uh, pumps, radiators, all sorts of stuff. Anyway, what you can do is you take this end here and you plug it into any of these here. If you're gonna fill up all five, it doesn't matter which one you put in first. However, if you're going to only put in one or two, or three in this case, look for the numbers on the back and go in that order. So we have whoop, this one here. Number one, it's installed, it's good to go. Essentially you're going to repeat that for the same, well, for the other remaining two. So there are three different cables that we can use. There are, we do need to require one of them, at least, which is this power connector here. So for those of you that have been around the PC building world for a while, you notice that this actually is a floppy disk power connector, uh, or it's the same one. So this is what's used to power the controller. And depending on your controller version, they'll either have an end that is a Molex connector or SATA. So that connects the power. Then on this side, you'll have two other ports here. This one here is called a bridge, and this is what's used to connect multiple controllers to the one controller. It's essentially like mirroring. So if you have a lot of space for RGB fans and you want to use 15 fans, so three controllers, you could bridge them all to the one. However, we're not going to do that because we're not so fan inclined. Um, but what we'll do here is I'll take this cable here that is included. It's a splitter and it's a USB micro splitter. So you have these two ends here, which are the USB micros. And then this here is a USB 2.0 header and it actually goes on your motherboard, which I will show you that in a hot minute. So with this, you plug this into the controller unit here. <laughs> USBs, am I right? I just need confidence. But once that's in, then 
This part here plugs into the motherboard, which I'll now show you. So this here is an ASUS motherboard. I actually can't even remember the exact version. It is a crosshair, but I'm not entirely sure which one it is. What you need to look for is a USB or a USB 2.0 header. Now these are normally located near the USB 3.0. So that's a 3.0, which you can tell by that interesting shape. This here is a USB 2.0. So if you look at this cable here, you'll see there is a spot that has no, uh, well that's, that's blocked off and you can't use it. That's how you can basically tell that it's a USB 2.0 header. So I'm going to plug that in to this spot here on the motherboard. And then that there is all connected. So Sarah mentioned it might be a good idea to show you how to actually like power these and show you the connection there. So I did show you when you turn on this PC, how all the lights work there. However, just to like make things a little bit clearer, I'll plug in the Molex, which is, this is a, a cable coming off your power supply. So I'll plug this in with great difficulty because that's what Molex is for me. Okay, they're back in. That's in with great difficulty. If I turn it on, it'll all run. And there you go. And just to show you, once again, if you just plug in your fans into this controller unit, it will power it up. Am I advocating that you plug everything while your PC is turned on? No, but I'm just showing you how it all works. So yeah, hope that hopefully that makes it a little bit more clear of how you can connect it all and how that sort of works. It's pretty straightforward. I think the more complicated part is the ARGB ones, which I'll show you now. Alrighty, let's hop over to the ARGB section. So the A in ARGB stands for addressable. Essentially, the LEDs inside of the RGB product are addressable, individually assigned an RGB value so then they can create, create a certain color. What we have with ARGB fans, for example, and you'll notice this in the, well, through the cables, especially on fans, is <laughs> you'll have one, whoop, let's untangle this mess. Okay, you'll have two cables that come off this. So one will be your traditional three or four pin power connector, which is here. This is a three or four pin fan connector. This is what powers the fan itself, not the LEDs. And then you'll have this other cable here that has a male and a female connector for the ARGB headers. Well, that's what they're called. So the ARGB header connectors. You'll have a male side, which is this bad boy. And then you'll have a female side. These, before it gets too complicated, are what I use to daisy chain or connect multiple ARGB products together. So in this gigantic mess of cables, I will show you how that works for fans specifically. Now this in our lineup of products also works for our ARGB edition water coolers. And this will come off, this cable here will come off the pump itself to power the LEDs in that. We're going to grab a, a female and a male connector from two separate fans and join them together. Oop. And now essentially, once I get through this mess, these two fans are connected. We can continue doing that. And we'll do it for the third here. And once again, we're gonna connect this uh, female to another male from the separate fan together. And now all three of these are connected. Being connected is, is one thing. The, the problem there is there's still no signal going to them to tell them to display certain colors. And that's when it adds another layer of complexity. <laughs> so you actually have a couple of options. You have two, 
really. You can be controlling them via your motherboard and its software like an ASUS board with Aura, an MSI board with Mystic Lite, Gigabyte with RGB Fusion, and Acerock with Poly something? <laughs> Poly Fusion? Um, essentially, I think all my motherboard manufacturers have their own version of an RGB software. So you can do that using dedicated cables that work with the motherboard specific RGB header, the five volt header, not the 12 volt, the five volt. I can't stress that enough. Do not put a five volt cable onto a 12 volt connector. It's not going to end well. So in our boxes of the products, you'll have two cables that will generally come with because F is actually gigabyte. However, I think they're actually moving away from this three pin. So this, this cable might be redundant very soon. You also receive the E. The E cable is what we're going to use and what I'm going to show you how to connect an ASUS motherboard to ARGB fan. So this end here looks familiar, right? This, oop, <laughs> it's a mess. This is what's gonna be used to connect the, the fans, all right? So we're gonna find the female end again and connect it to this male connector here. And now that part one of two is, is done. Now this is where we start to look for an RGB header on your motherboard. So ASUS include on this specific motherboard two. Now they have a 12 volt, which is up in that corner there. You can see it, it's got four pins. That's the one we're not going to use, okay? We're hunting for the five volt header. You may need to use your motherboard manual, but I've already located ours here, and there it is. Plugged in on an angle, mad dogs. Essentially, that is motherboard connected ARGB. You would then plug your fan cables into the fans, uh, fan ports on your motherboard. This motherboard has so many, it's insane. I'm going to show you them plugged in here only because this is a powered PC and so I can show you what these will look like once it's all on. But, we're actually not going to use motherboard control for this. I'm going to show you the other method as well, which is with the included manual controller. So if you don't want the hassle of installing extra software on your PC, then you can still control ARGB fans and other products with this cable here. So I'll unwrap this. Ooh. And I'll kind of show you what this looks like. So, one end, you'll see our new best friend, the, the male ARGB header. And then, which is awesome to see, a SATA power cable. So, to install this correctly, you'll find a, an available SATA port um, from your power supply. And you'll connect the SATA power together, oops. Like so. And then, instead of connecting this motherboard cable, we're gonna rip you out. We're gonna now plug this one into this cable connector instead. And so, These are now all connected. Sorry for the mess. These are all connected to just the power supply and this remote here. And I think I can jerry rig it. So these fans aren't even gonna turn on, but the LEDs will. There we go. <laughs> so there you go. So that there is now all controlled via this cable here. So you don't even need to bother, uh, bother with installing ASUS Aura if you don't want to, or MSI Mystic Lite, all that sort of stuff. You can just use this to change the color, Oop. the mode, 
make it RGB. Everyone loves RGB. <laughs> um, yeah, so you can do that. If you want to know how to power the, the fans, well, you just use the traditional uh, three or four pin. So once again, I'm, I'm connecting this while the PC is on and I do not advocate this. I'm using a two fan splitter here. I don't have a third one, but it's all connected. So yeah, in my opinion, I do like this method just because it's so simple. Um, however, I'm someone that likes to change the colors up on my PC all the time. And so you have to sort of put this in a position in your case where you can easily access it, which can get a little bit annoying. Okay, so that's pretty much all there is to it. I hope that's cleared things up for you, but obviously if you do have any questions or comments to add, drop them down below so then we can get back to them and I'll try to answer as many as I can. However, if you want to know how to install fans, because I didn't really dive into that, I just more so focused on connecting RGB connectivity, then there should be a video up here that better describes how to do that. But I think that's about it. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video, like it if you did, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, hit the dislike button twice if you didn't, and if you're still here, then please feel free to check any of these two videos out. One will be one that YouTube recommends you like, and one will be one that we force upon you. So, yeah. I think that wraps it up for me. Thank you for tuning in this daily August, and uh, I'll see you sometime in the future. Bye.